Good morning, everybody. So before we get started today, I thought I would take a few minutes to talk to you guys about evolution. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I was surfing around on the internet and I was looking at these watercolor paintings and um, alcohol ink paintings. And I looked at them and I thought, you know what? Those look like they could be transparent glass. So I played around with my transparent enamels and kind of just got this little blotchy bead. And I was like, oh, that kind of looks like a watercolor. That's pretty. And then I was surfing around some more and I saw all these silhouette paintings. I was like, oh my gosh, those are so pretty. I want to make a tree silhouette. So I did. <laughs> and then I thought, well, why not put that tree on top of the transparent enamels? And it'll look like a tree on a watercolor. And so this is what I came up with. And then finally, I saw an acrylic painting with the watercolors in the background and the silhouette tree, but it had the seasons of the year um, as leaves. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. So here we are, <laughs> the evolution of a bead. We're gonna make this one today. I got fall, fall in yellow, winter in blue, spring in pink, and summer in green. So this is the bead we're gonna make. Okay, let's talk materials. Um, I have gone ahead and busted out my enamels. Again, these are Thompson enamels for a Fetre Moretti. So they're 104 COE transparent enamels. And these enamels came from Thompson's sample set. So it's the transparent sample set. I have spring green, which I use as my yellow. See, pretty yellow. Um, and then I have aqua blue for winter. And then I am using cherry pink for the spring. This is a really pretty pink. It's, it's pretty bright and saturated. I like it. And then I have gem green for our summer green. I have also pulled um, a lot of the encased cane. Now, if you guys need to review enamels, I do have a video on how to use enamels. I'm gonna use um, my little sister here to apply them. So be sure and review that video if you need to on how to use enamels. Okay, back to encased cane. Uh, for fall, I encased Moretti light yellow with a Moretti medium amber. I just like this really nice golden color here that you get. And then for winter, I use my new favorite. This is a Fetre light sky blue with creation is messy, leaky pen. And you get kind of this cold steel blue color that I'm really loving right now. Um, for the springtime, I wanted to try something different. I used Creation is Messy Jelly Sty, and I encased it in a Fetre Rubino Oro. So we'll see how this one comes out. This is a pretty pink color, and I really like that too. And then finally, for the summertime, I used a Fetre pea green and I just encased it with the transparent Fetre light grass green and we got a nice little green color here for our summer leaves and then I went ahead and I pulled some black stringers for our tree now this is creation is messy onyx and I was on Facebook last week asking you know what is the best black to use for stringer work and I was told um, the Reichenbach deep black but I don't have any of that so I have this onyx that I've been playing with I like it it's a lot like the um, Fetre intense black but it's not as expensive so I'm gonna use onyx today and we'll see how that goes 
And then finally, just my base bead. I know I made this tree on white, but I'm gonna put it on ivory today and see how it comes out, just cause I wanted to do something different. So those are our glass materials. I am going to use my CG uh, oval roller to make the base bead, and I'm going to smash that oval with my famous monster mashers here that I have. And then finally, the last tool I need, I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife to kind of cut in the leaves. I'm not gonna smash them flat because I want them kind of bumpy. So I found that if you use an X-Acto knife on each one of the dots, you can press them in and give them some extra texture. So that's all the equipment, tools, and supplies. Let's get started. Okay, here we go with our basic bead shape. Um, I went ahead and I made, I think it's seven wraps across, two wraps high. I put some glass down in the center. And then I'm just gonna start to lightly press that glob of glass right down in my little press here. And the first time that I'm shaping, I kind of press. I don't roll it until I actually have the shape and it's nice and easy to move around. If you are pressing really hard or if you're having to really manipulate stuff around, you probably need to press before you actually roll. And that looks good. That was an easy one. And again, because I'm gonna press this flat, I'm not too worried about getting the perfect shape. And it doesn't matter. It's gonna be kind of an abstract bead anyways. So, you know, if the shape's a little wonky, I don't kill myself over that. All right, let's go ahead and heat up this little oval bead. I got my mashers on the standby. And let's see what kind of shape we get. A little press. Oh, that's so pretty. I like it. Oh, that's pretty. That tree is going to go right plop in the center. So I am going to flash out the tool marks and then we'll move on to step number two. Here we are, step number two. I'm going to get those enamels going. Now, um, one of the things I had a crack catastrophe yesterday because I didn't keep my bead warm and I went to clean it and it came off the mandrel in two pieces and I'm like oh man so um with regards to keeping this bead warm I use the back of the bead to keep everything warm I find that if you get keep the back kind of not so much glowing but really hot that 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 heat will transfer to the front of the bead and keep the whole bead warm. I also kind of work on the sides, especially down where those mandrel holes are. So by keeping the back of the bead warm and the sides of the bead warm, you can work on the front of the bead and know that your bead's not gonna crack. All right, I have my enamels here on my wet paper towel. I have my little sifter and it doesn't take much. So let's go do a dip in the yellow. And then I'm going to put my bead down by the paper towel, the wet paper towel, and just give it a little sprinkle in the lower left quadrant, <laughs> which is the geek is still in me. What could I say? <laughs> then I'm gonna go get a little sprinkle of the blue in my sifter and kind of heat up just that one area at the top, on top of the yellow, and then give it a little sprinkle. Remember, you're using that coil on the sifter to sprinkle that enamel. You don't have to shake the sifter, just run your finger over the coil and it'll come right out. Then let's go to this cherry pink, which I really like, it's pretty. For a transparent pink, it's very vibrant. And let's light up that top corner. And when it comes out, it looks kind of blue, but that's all right. And then I'm gonna go for a dip for my green transparent and right down in that bottom corner. We're gonna light it up and we're gonna go ahead and sift. 
Now I, with this enamels, I'm actually melting it in. I know in my enamel video, I talked about the sugar coating and the orange peel coating, but on this particular bead design, I didn't really want a, a textured um, background. I wanted it to look textured, but actually be smooth. So that looks really pretty. Now, if you want a little bit more in spots, you can always double dip, like here on the pink. I think I need a little more pink right there. And what's cool is that the pink and the blue are gonna come together and kind of be purplish. So you're gonna get a nice little gradient when you get those colors mixed. All right, there's the enamels. Let me get my black stringers ready to move on. So here we go with my tree. Um, I'm gonna go ahead now. So this particular bead, I've got my torch set, I don't know, I would consider this like medium high because I need the heat down here to keep my bead warm, but I'm gonna use the heat up here to put down the stringer. So a lot of times when I'm using these fine stringers, I'll turn my torch down, but in this case, since I had a bead crack yesterday, I'm all paranoid about it and worried and super, super focused on keeping my bead warm. So this is where you want to be able to use the heat um, and know where's the hot spot, where's the cool spot, and how much do I need to get the particular job done. So I have my black onyx stringer. It's not what I would consider a hair stringer. It's, it's skinny, but it's not super fine because I don't know how to use super fine stringers. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Maybe someday I'll tackle it, but so far I haven't needed to. So I'm gonna put down a couple lines and this is the trunk right here. And I put the trunk down um, a couple lines of stringer. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little, um, like a knot in the, in the trunk when we get done. That looks cool. You can't see it but you can feel it and that's kind of neat, I think. All right, some branches. We're just gonna start putting in the branches all willy nilly. I don't really worry about where they go or how they go, but I just put in some big branches. There we go. And I am going to press these down as I work because again, the other day when I was prototyping these, I had some of the trunk fall off and I was like oh man so I would say press down the branches as you work on them get down there at the base of that trunk keep your bead warm you got eight million things going on all at one time okay I do have this little hairy stringer that I'm going to give a shot with oh don't kill me you guys I know I'm doing this probably wrong okay get that little guy hot get the bead hot and down it goes. And we're just gonna come off and put some little hairy, hairy branches here, coming off of each of the bigger branches. Huh, not so bad. I think I did okay, you guys. Let's go ahead and press the little teeny ones down. All right, nice. Nice. All right, getting that bead hot. And now I've got a stringer that's um, fat-ish, kinda. It's not a manufactured stringer, but it is fat. And I'm gonna heat up right in the middle of that trunk. And I'm gonna insert my stringer and I'm just gonna twist it. And that's gonna cause a little swirl in the middle of that tree. And it's gonna look like a knot. And if you don't like it the first time, go in for a second twirl. Oh, that one looks much better. And there you go. Now we got a knot in our tree. All right, press these guys down. Make sure they're nice and attached, especially the little ones in the center. And there's our tree. Let me get to the leaves. Okay, here we go with our yellow leaves. I always start with the yellow first and it's just time to dot, you guys. 
And here again is where I just love using these encased canes because when I saw the painting on the um, on the acrylic painting, they they had like a base color down and then they had like a highlight color, and I was like, wow. That is pretty. I'm going to do that with encased cane. So this is where that highlighting comes in that I'm going for, trying to get um, an oil painting kind of look or an acrylic painting kind of look. All right, now I got my blue, and I'm going around kind of over here. Then let's move on to springtime with my pink jelly sty encased with rubino boy i tell you what if anyone ever comes out with a super bright fuchsia color i'm gonna go crazy been looking for that fuchsia color for years moretti used to have something called um edp we called it evil de vitrifying purple but they don't make it anymore and that was a loss. I was bummed. All right, and finally we got the summertime green right here on the edges. Summertime, summertime. And I'm not really packing these, these leaves in. I'm just kind of setting them down random because I do want the watercolor to show through. Okay, that looks good. And now for the piece de resistance. I have my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to light up, first I'm going to heat the back because I'm all scared. I'm just going to light up some of those dots and I use my, oops, you can't see it. I use the base of my torch kind of just to hold things down and I just go into some of those dots and give them a little press with the X-Acto knife. I don't know, I just like it, especially there's some big dots there that kind of got blobby. So you can press them down with your X-Acto and that helps flatten the dots so they don't pop off, but also it gives them a little kind of ribby texture. Let's go do some of the pinks. Still keeping that back warm because I know that sucker gonna bust. I'm gonna be sad. Okay, and then finally the yellow. <laughs> trying to do this without turning my torch off <laughs> there we go all right you guys and that is our four season bead it'll come out really nice when it gets annealed and we pull it out of the kiln i'll go ahead later this afternoon and post it in the comment section what it looks like as a finished bead anyways i hope you guys liked it here in nevada in las vegas when it's under 100 degrees that means it's fall so happy fall, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.